The Texas Parks and Wildlife Television Series is funded in part by a grant from the Wildlife and Sport Fish Restoration Program. Through your purchases of hunting and fishing equipment and motorboat fuels, over $50 million in conservation efforts are funded in Texas each year. And by Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation, helping to keep Texas wild with the support of proud members across the state. Find out more at tpwf.org. Additional funding provided by Ram Trucks. Guts. Glory. Ram. Coming up on Texas Parks and Wildlife. Oh, here we go. People had two, three, four copperheads in their yard. I've never had anybody report 150 copperheads in a season. So I don't buy this argument that people aren't enjoying the outdoors anymore. I think they're just enjoying it in different ways. We're gonna pull these out of the oil, take them right to this paper towel to drain. Texas Parks and Wildlife, a television series for all outdoors. If you head down a dirt road near Sweeney, Texas, keep your eyes peeled. Because underneath these towering oaks, slithering below the Spanish moss, are plenty of these guys. This is Copperhead Country. I've dealt with more copperheads than most professional have, and I'm just a guy that lives in Sweeney, Texas. Lee Hubbard's property is overrun with copperheads. Common throughout much of the state, these small, venomous pit vipers seem to really like Lee's place. At first, he killed the snakes. And after a while, it became too much. Yeah, let's find some. So he called in some help. Well, uh, I've received a number of calls over the years where people had two, three, four, up to 20 uh, copperheads in their yard. I'd never had anybody report 150 copperheads in a season. And it turns out that uh, that's really pretty average around here. There's one right there. Hey, Chris, first one of the night. Is this how you normally find them? Yes. Just here at the base of the tree? Yep, they sit by the base of the trees waiting for the cicadas. There's that classic pit viper head shape. It's not unusual to find copperheads throughout most of Texas. If you look very closely between the eye and the nostril on the upper lip, you'll see some small pits in the scales above the lip, and those are the heat sensing organs. Snake specialist Christopher Swanson is collecting these copperheads for science. That's two. We don't want to hurt these animals. We're trying to collect them as gently as possible. But because they're in a feeding scenario at this time of night, this time of year, we actually have to chase after them. Oh, here we go. You see one? Where? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good size one. Cool. And there's a cicada molt. The copperheads here, this is what they're eating. They're eating the insects. When they come out of the ground and they molt, the snakes feed on them. They actually come up and they'll work their jaws all the way over them without a uh, envenomating bite. They have no purpose to do that, which is why we found their venom very, very interesting. There you go. Scientists believe that a protein found in the venom of copperheads inhibits the growth of cancerous tumors. For Lee, this hits home. His aunt died of cancer, and the next day, a team started collecting copperheads to help with the research. To find out that day, after burying my aunt the day before, that we could do something and possibly help. I have two daughters, I have a beautiful wife. So, first of all, I mean, copperheads in them could save one of my family members. So that's why I do it. It's just fantastic, and you know, here we've turned from a landowner who you know, perceived the copperheads on his property as a nuisance or a potential threat, and now he recognizes them as a potential medical miracle. It's, it's just great. You know, I, I, I couldn't be happier.
So I work for the Paramount Academy for the Arts, um, which is the educational branch of the Paramount Theater. Working at the Paramount is a very fast-paced environment. It's go, go, go. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, I don't know. Is Showstoppers one word? Yeah, I'm excited. See ya. Paramount is um, in downtown Austin. It's right off Congress Avenue, just a few blocks from the Capitol. Everything's very fast-paced. And so that's why I really like to take a step back, take a breather, get outside. There are so many opportunities, even within an hour's drive. So I don't think it's difficult to get outdoors, but it is something you have to, you have to make it a priority. I think a lot of times being outdoors can be intimidating. You know, I definitely felt that way. I know a lot of people feel that way. But I don't think you have to have that background information to enjoy a state park. I don't think I bring anything super special to the table. I think I just ask the right questions and I'm not afraid to admit when I don't know the answer to something or I don't know how something works. It's not state of the art, it's not anything fancy, it's pretty simple, but it works for me. I probably do not get outside as often as the generation before me. But I also think it's coming back into style. I think people are re-realizing the value of the outdoors and the value of just experiencing and exploring nature. I don't know what it is, but it does not look friendly. I don't think anyone hates the outdoors. I think that's, that's bogus when people say that. I think there's something in the outdoors for everyone and you just have to sort of find what your thing is. So I don't buy this argument that people aren't enjoying the outdoors anymore. I don't think that's true. I think they're just enjoying it in different ways. I don't think there is a right way to use nature. You know what I mean? I don't think there's a right way to experience the outdoors. Uh, reading a book outside is one of my favorite things. And it's good in almost any circumstance. And if you're going for a selfie versus going to tough it out in the wilderness for five days, great, both are valid options. All right, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna be super narcissistic and get a selfie. Please don't judge me. I think the outdoors are for everyone. I think they are called public lands for a reason. I feel like that's a common goal in general is to, I want to spend more time outdoors. But until you book it, until you make the plans, it's not going to happen. And the opportunities are there. It's just about really committing to it and going for it. It's going that way first, and are oh, you shooting a different one now? Yeah. Okay. Pull. Oh. oh. Wow. It's been a while. Not what we want on the hunting channel. <laughs> the opening of dove season in Texas is just a few hours away, and James Montgomery is getting in a little shooting practice. You haven't shot a gun in two years, so I got to knock the rust off here. Pull. Okay. Pull. Cool. There we go. I think I hit about maybe 5%, but I hit my last shot, so I'm going in tomorrow good. So it's going to be a good day. This is James Montgomery, Austin resident, businessman, family man, father, coach, dove hunter. 
definitely the whole experience, you know, getting away from the, the everyday hustle and bustle of going to work, leaving the job behind, leaving soccer practice, you know, <laughs> behind. It feels good to get away and just experience nature. So they're scared of me now. James didn't grow up in a hunting family, so he came to hunting in a roundabout way. You know, I grew up playing soccer and football, missed out on Boy Scouts, never got involved in the outdoors. Didn't find hunting until in my mid-20s or so. That's when a friend invited James to go dove hunting. And I think I bagged maybe two birds. Yeah, I got a sore shoulder and a great experience out of the deal. Ever since then, I've been hooked. The great thing about dove hunting is you don't need to grow up in it. Um, as far as having a place to go, uh, there's a lot of public opportunities available for dove hunting that Texas Parks and Wildlife provide. There's right at a million acres of public hunting land available through the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department's annual public hunting permit program. What about the water? We got a little bit of water over here. That land includes wildlife management areas, state parks, and land leased from private landowners and companies. For the most part, you just need some shells and a shotgun and a hunting license, you can be good to go and have a great opportunity to get in the outdoors and uh, get an experience and get the introduction to, to hunting in Texas. Yes, good boy. Good boy. Hey James, let's work this pole a little bit, buddy. Mom, I saw one! While James didn't discover the outdoors until he was in his 20s, he's starting his kids out early, hoping to instill in them at a young age a love for nature. Why is it heavy? Why is it heavy? Well, because they're tugging on you. So my kids are four and six years old, and I, I believe that they're, they're a little young for hunting. Hold it up, buddy. Hey. I think fishing is probably one of the best ways to introduce the kids outdoors because it's a safe sport, and it, it helps them appreciate nature. It's in my ah! What was that? Fly, buddy. You're all right. Watch your, watch your bobber. Well, more than anything, I want another reason to go out and hang out with my boys as much as possible. Pull it, pull it, pull it. There you go. There's too many gadgets and devices that keep our attention and keep us focused on being inside of the house. Put it down on the bed. I want another reason to come outside and enjoy nature. Want to see a twerking video real quick? <laughs> For James, this hunting season starts inside on his iPad. I am purchasing my hunting license online. Combination hunting and fishing, super combo. Beats going to the store, especially we don't have time to go down there and stand in line. Well done. That was easy. The opening day of dove season finally arrives. James is ready. He's got his license, he's had some practice, and he's got a case of shells. A case. You know, I plan on shooting a lot of birds, or missing a lot of birds, one of the two. <laughs> Go! The opening day hunt was, it was a little rough for me. I missed the previous year. It was almost like it was my first hunt. Shot out a bunch. I missed quite a few birds. A long shot. But yeah, we had a good time. This right, we're gonna be grilling hamburger. James is hunting with friends on the Bird Family Ranch in Fife, Texas. Brian Franca is the leaseholder. He's been hunting here for about five years. I got wings here, so. On opening day, you know, people were all around the field. There were probably 15 or 20 of us. Woo! I thought I picked the wrong spot. I thought they put me there for a reason. <laughs> I was like, that, this is why they put me here, because the birds don't fly this way. Across the field, you can hear gunshots after gunshots. Like, wow, we gotta move around. Eventually, you know, the wind shifted and, uh, and the birds started coming my way. Oh, wow. It got a lot more exciting really quickly. Good shot, go! That, that makes it all worth it right there. Did we each get one out of that group? Yeah. Dove hunting has always been a family affair for Brian. He's brought along his son, Ty. I don't go hunting without him. Son? As well as his dad. Don't you go out there and take my bird. <laughs> Brian's dad is great to have out there when you're hunting. He is everybody's spotter. Hey, go over your left shoulder. Over your left shoulder. When he sees a bird, Hi. he's going to let you know Coming it. Coming between you, 
Jim Martin. He's going to call your name. You're going to hear him. Jimbo, Jimbo. Brian, Brian, Brian. Justin, Justin. Even through your ear protection. James, straight at you. He got one. <laughs> He's great to have around and it just makes it that much more fun. Right there, Ty. Right there. Ty is 10 years old. You know, I'm three times his age at least. And he was he was making me look bad out there. Good shot, Ty. Initially I was trying to put the bead right on the bird. And um, you have to realize these things are fast, so you have to lead the bird as as Ty pointed out. You gotta shoot a little in front of it. You gotta leave your ego in the car when you go hunting and just take all the coaching you can get. It was slow at first and it, it picked up. It made, it made it all worth it. Just gotta have a little patience. Brian, how many you got? A lot. <laughs> Brian realizes that he has probably 10 times more experience than I do at this. Take him, James. He'll let some birds fly by him to help me out. Take him. To make sure that we're all having a good time. There you go, James. Woo! The good news is that I didn't limit out this morning, so I got to come out again to shoot some more. <laughs> I got four birds in the bag, and you're having a good time, so I'm not at work. <laughs> it's going great. I didn't grow up in the hunting family, but I'm glad I found it. I cannot wait to take James and Noah out hunting, fishing and camping, and all the things that I experienced late in life. I want to start super early with them, just doing fun things and connecting and and have some good quality time together. Now, about that case of shells he needed for opening day. Maybe one box of shells left. Hey, it's great for the economy. Keep an academy in business. All right. That last one was a tough shot. It's a coin flip on who got it, Mary. I was pretty sure that one was mine. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I felt it. We'll flip a coin. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> Hi, this is Jeff Martinez with El Chile Cafe and Cantina in Austin, Texas. Today we're going to be doing some wild game cooking. We're using Dove today. It's a lean, tender, dark meat. We're making a buffalo dove breast with a celery and carrot salad and a blue cheese dressing. Let's get started. We're gonna take our dove breast, we're gonna dredge it in the flour. Make sure you coat them all over. This flour is gonna help the buttermilk stick to the dove breast. Here's the buttermilk right here, right in there. Make sure they're coated all over with buttermilk. And then right back into the flour. The buttermilk's gonna help the flour stick to the dove breast. Make sure they're evenly coated with the flour, just like so. All right, then we're gonna go straight into the oil. You want your oil to be at 375 degrees. That'll give you a nice brown, crusty coating on the outside while cooking the dove through. While those are cooking, we're gonna go ahead and make our salad. So we've got some celery, some shaved carrots, a little bit of red onion, and I like to use all of the vegetables, so I've got some celery leaves here from the top and some buttermilk dressing to finish it off. Toss that around. Make sure you coat all the vegetables with the dressing. And that buttermilk dressing will take away some of the bite of the buffalo sauce. All right, there we go. Let's check our dove breasts. We're gonna pull these out of the oil. Take them right to this paper towel to drain. I've got my homemade buffalo sauce here. It's a mix of sriracha, butter, vinegar, a little Worcestershire sauce. I'm gonna throw these right in. I'm gonna mix them up, make sure I coat them evenly, and I'm gonna go ahead and put them on top of the salad. And then I'm gonna finish it all off with a little blue cheese. So this is a new twist on an old favorite, buffalo wings, and it's also a great way to end your dove hunt. Buen provecho, y'all. Yeah. Will Bloodworth and Guy Gray are members of a group called DORBA. DORBA is the Dallas Off-Road Bicycle Association. Today they're riding DORBA trails at Ray Roberts Lake State Park. And they're joined by another friend for a stretch. So I had my dog Hattie with me and I actually hooked her to uh, my seat post. 
I've come out here and done the whole eight miler with her before, and this was the first day this year that's been cool enough for me to bring her. A little bit different, you don't see too many dogs out on the trail, but it's fun to do. With or without a dog, there are miles of trails to explore, north and south of the lake. There's multiple parks on the lake itself. With both Il Dois State Park and Johnson Branch State Park on Ray Roberts Lake, from the beginner to the expert, any type of biking that you'd like to do, Ray Roberts Lake State Park has it. We have everything from single track mountain bike trails to fairly wide concrete trails for walking and mountain biking and hiking. And then we have equestrian trails too. But for mountain bikers, the Dorba trails are the main attraction. It's great for all levels. Around uh, the lake is more of an intermediate terrain. Johnson Branch has uh, quite a bit of what we call flowy sections. It has a lot of switchback sections. It has roots and rocks and sand and open field. So you get a little bit of everything here. I love it. I think it's very challenging. And if you don't challenge yourself, you're not going to improve. You're always pushing yourself and trying to get better. And this trail will do that for you. I want another shot at that. That's how you get better, is just find it until you get it done. A more leisurely pedal connects Ray Roberts Lake and the city of Denton. The 10-mile Greenbelt Trail follows the Elm Fork of the Trinity River. Jacob Knight and Brittany Kirkland like to hit the trail in tandem. Ready on three? One? We enjoy the tandem. I work in a bike shop, so I'm fortunate enough to come across some random things like that, and I got it for a good price, and we've enjoyed the heck out of it. Then and then, remember? You know, it's a really good way for us to ride and be able to talk at the same time. <laughs> when I'm on my own bike, I have to obviously watch where I'm going, but that's what I like about the tandem is I get to kind of take a seat back and just look and enjoy what's around me. Oh, yeah. I think one of the coolest parts about this trail is the wildlife that you get to see when you ride down the trail. I love being able to ride and pass a deer or an armadillo that's just like rooting around in the leaves and doesn't care that you're there. I think that's one of the neatest things about being out here. It's really close to home and you can kind of feel like you're in the middle of nowhere. Uh, it's just really beautiful out here. Uh, coast. North Texas gets the reputation of being flat, but here at Ray Roberts Lake State Park, we have a mixture of everything. I live very close to other trails, 15, 20 minutes closer to them. But they're not as challenging, uh, they're not as quiet, uh, so it's well worth the extra drive to come out here. People from Dallas, Fort Worth, just come on up. It's a great trail to come to. Let Passport to Texas be your guide. Listen to the weekday radio series and encounter fascinating wildlife. Explore the diversity of our parks and historic sites. Enjoy the country's best hunting and fishing. Visit PassportToTexas.org to find a station near you. And remember, life's better outside.
This series is funded in part by a grant from the Wildlife and Sport Fish Restoration Program. Through your purchases of hunting and fishing equipment and motorboat fuels, over $50 million in conservation efforts are funded in Texas each year. And by Texas Parks and Wildlife Foundation, helping to keep Texas wild with the support of proud members across the state. Find out more at tpwf.org. Additional funding provided by Ram Trucks. Guts. Glory. Ram.